Hello, and thanks for watching Focus, a program that focuses on community, unity, and service. I'm Chris Giard. Our next featured nonprofit is Favor Inc., a statewide organization based in Wethersfield that is committed to empowering families as advocates and partners in improving educational and health outcomes for children. My guest today is Beresford Wilson, the executive director of Favor. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon. Glad to be here. Beresford, why don't you give us a little background on Favor and uh, how long you guys been around and what you do? Favor, um, and I'm, I'm glad to do that, uh, Chris. Favor is a statewide multicultural family support organization. We were incorporated in 2001. Um, the reason why um, Favor came about is because the federal government sends a certain amount of dollars to Connecticut um, in its mental health block grant. Um, in order to qualify for that grant, the state has to have a multicultural family support organization that is statewide. In 2000, Connecticut did not have uh, such organization. So um, representatives from four um, family support organizations got together um, with the guidance of uh, DCF, one of the state agencies, along with the Women's Consortium of Connecticut, and we um, structured and talked about what the statewide multicultural um, organization should look like, and that became favor. That was the roots of it. Um, I was involved with that, uh, with that group. Uh, at that time, I worked for an organization called AFCAMP, African Caribbean American Parents for Children with Disabilities. Uh, one of the other um, organizations was um, Families United for Children's Mental Health that serviced the New London area. Uh, also, Padres Arriento Puertas that service the Hartford area along with AFCAMP and Wheeler Clinic. Um, we were the organizations that were at the table with the Women's Consortium. And like I said, um, when we um, structured and put it on paper, um, we came up with uh, the organization Favor. And now I find myself uh, for the last two years as the uh, I'm sorry, going on three years, the executive director of this organization. I'm, I'm, I'm proud to um, be servicing in, in that capacity. Great. Congratulations on that. Um, so obviously you guys saw a need and um, you filled that and, and it's, things have been going very well since then. Approximately how many families across the state do you guys help out? On, on average, I want to say we service upwards of 600 families um, annually. Um, we provide advocacy and um, support in the areas of juvenile justice, child welfare, and special education. Primarily education, though. Um, understanding that when a child um, is diagnosed with a behavioral health or mental health um, diagnosis, um, usually they, they are loaned to those other systems. Um, juvenile justice and, um, and child welfare. We find the data to be high in those areas. So um, we make sure that um, our, our um, family um, peer specialists uh, are experienced and versed in um, the, uh, navigating and negotiating um, those systems. Now, I know the folks and your staff have uh, background and in different areas, whether it be education as well as caregiving, I mean, they, they must have some, some pretty good experience that they can bring to the table. Um, you know, typically how many people do you have on staff to, to assist these families? We, we have about uh, 27, 28 um, uh, staff. Um, we have three programs. Uh, our primary program and our legacy program is our um, family peer support specialist program. Um, in Connecticut, we used to call them advocates um, for um, political reasons. Um, they're not called advocates anymore. We don't use that um, terminology or language. But um, we um, are ramping up to um, staff uh, eight to 10 um, peer support specialists. And uh, those are um, family members primarily that have lived experience. 98% of the favorite staff are family members with lived experience. Um, these are the staff that go out and work one-on-one -on -one with families, attend PPTs, trainings, and um, educating the families on um, how to be their child's best advocate. 
we also provide um, uh, guidance and um, direction uh, on the policy level, on the, on the legislative level. We um, mobilize through our um, Family Systems Managers Program, we mobilize families to um, participate at external and internal tables that have to do with um, human services and child welfare, um, primarily child, uh, children's services. So um, on, on that level, um, our staff, and we have uh, eight dedicated staff, um, including the supervisor and a statewide person that, um, like I said, mobilize families and mental families at those external tables and internal tables that really guide and direct um, our um, appointed and our hired leaders like uh, Commissioner DCF, uh, Commissioner and um, staff of, uh, upper management staff of um, DSS and DDS and, and Demis. Um, I myself, I sit at the uh, oversight uh, committee table for Children's Behavioral Health Partnership. That is a contract between DCF Demis and um, Department of Social Services. And, you know, we make sure that families are at those tables so that their voice has volume and that they are fully employed in the process of structuring, determining, and um, uh, uh, making sure that we have a, a child service system that is responsive to parents and children's needs and the issues. Great. It's glad to have they have that voice at the state level there with you guys. Um, Obviously, our world has changed since the coronavirus. I'm sure that's kind of affected your organization as well. What are some of the, the biggest changes you've had to uh, overcome in helping out your, your families? Well, you know, the changes are, con the, 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 the issues and the barriers are, are consistent. Um, I can't say that we are um, grossly impacted by uh, this, um, uh, these uncertain times. Um, for the most part, um, Majority of our employees um, are remote workers. They work um, out of their home and in the areas in which they live, um, in which they have experience. Um, and, you know, our office is um, officially closed to the public, but we have essential workers that come in and um, handle a few essential workers that come in and handle some administrative services and what have you, um, administrative responsibilities, making sure that um, everything is documented, that um, staff get paid, that's very important. Um, I'm glad to announce that, um, you know, since this pandemic, we have kept all our staff employed in uh, working and responding to the needs and the concerns that families have, especially in these uncertain times. Wow, that's great. I'm, I'm glad to hear that you were able to do that. Um, Obviously, you know, if somebody that's watching this uh, wants to get involved or, you know, wants to enlist your services, how can they get in touch with you guys? Well, we, we do have a website. Um, we try to keep it up to date as much as possible. And that's a great way to contact us. All our contact information is there. Um, usually, uh, we find out that parents get in contact with us through word of mouth. Um, through social media. We have social media pages. Um, and usually when a person finds themselves in, in the need of our services, um, they, they find out where we are and we get to them. We, um, more than circumstance, we, um, we're there. We find ourselves in those places where, um, where, where families are in need. Excellent. Beresford Wilson, Executive Director of Favor, thank you very much for taking time off to be a guest.